All right, today we're gonna build an editing machine and we're gonna do so for under three grand. Can it be done? I think it can. Now, a lot of people are moving away from the Apple for editing because Final Cut became sort of a prosumer thing. Everyone's just kind of jerking around with it. It's not really the Hollywood standard anymore, so I'm really sorry about that. It's hard to hear. But CS6 is the standard. There's also Lightwave coming out at the end of the year if you know how to use that. It's a totally different world, but they use it for a lot of big movies. And that's going to be Linux, PC, and maybe Mac. I forget. I don't know. But anyway, uh, a lot of the creative firms are moving to the PC. Uh, Kane works for a firm in New York, and all the regular employees have Apple products. However, their entire creative team switched over to PCs. So I've been talking to Max, and uh, we put together a system here. Now, this is not going to be a Xeon-based system because it's under $3,000. Uh, but it's going to be insanely fast, and we're using, actually, using all parts that I've tried, tested all this stuff, and I know it's good. So let's start off with the uh, CPU, and we're going to go socket 2011 with a 3930K. It's a six-core CPU from uh, from Intel, running at 3.2 gigahertz. We can overclock that easily. It's a monster. It's truthfully, it's not that much faster than some of the other Intel uh, parts for uh, for gaming, but for editing and rendering, it's it's absurd. For the uh, CPU cooler, I'm going to grab a Corsair H100. Can't go wrong with that. Put it in a push-pull. Don't really need to say much about this. It's just one of the best water cooling kits out there. And uh, it's self-contained, easy to install. So we're not going to build like a custom water cooling uh, into this entire thing. We just want that one for the CPU. For the motherboard, we're going to use one of my favorite X79 motherboards, the uh, Asus Sabertooth X79. It's all the, the quote-unquote tough components. I got a really nice power phase design. They use the best MOSFETs, the best capacitors. Uh, so it's just really top quality, extremely stable. Uh, I've seen some X79 boards that, that benchmark just a few frames per second higher here and there, or a few seconds faster in one render or another, but I, I really don't know of any that is as stable as the X79. I mean, we've got the X79, like, we've got, like, 10 in every room. That's that's how good they are. So we're definitely going to be recommending that one. For the memory, we're going to get um, 32 gigabytes of Mushkin Blackline RAM. Um, that's uh, it'll be eight sticks in total to fill up all the slots. We want to take full advantage of this uh, quad channel uh, motherboard so we can get nice speeds. Uh, this is 2133 megahertz RAM, and the cast latency on this is 10. So it's pretty nice and fast. Now, for the hard drives, we're going to go crazy. We're going to grab one 2 terabyte Western Digital just for backup. You can grab another one if you want to run them in RAID 1 for uh, security. But I hope if you're doing editing, you have like a NAS or an external hard drive or something like that. But we're going to grab one just for the system, just to have in there. Then we're going to grab five of the Kingston HyperX 3Ks. Uh, one of my favorite SSDs. We've got like, I think we have nine or ten of them in the building right now. Uh, we're getting the 120 gigabyte flavor. We're going to run those in RAID 0. That's where we're going to do our editing. Uh, that's where we're going to do our rendering. And the rendering is going to be stupid fast with five SSDs. Each one of those has like 500 megabytes, uh, over 500 megabytes read and write. For the graphics card, I'm going to grab an EVGA GTX 680. Now, this card's really fast for video games, of course. Uh, but it also will allow us to do some GPU acceleration in programs like Premiere, thanks to CUDA. Um, I would go with the 7970, however, Premiere 6 does not support OpenCL. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of like 3D programs and stuff, you'll be able to take advantage of OpenCL, and I do like the 7970 better. It's a little bit faster, so sort of a toss-up. I mean, you can really pick whichever one you like. They're both really, really good cards. If you're going hardcore and you're spending the big bucks, you're probably going to buy a Quadro or an AMD Fire card anyway. For the case, this is going to be the biggest argument, I think, um, but I'm going to make my case for the case. The case, we're going to grab a uh, Corsair C70, you can grab it in military green or black, either one. I like this case. It's a, a little bit loud. I mean, you can hear the case when you have lots of fans whirring inside there. But um, I like the build of it. I like the fact that it has handles. It's smaller. I didn't want to go with a full tower case. But I wanted something that was a little smaller that we can move around. Two handles is nice. It's just tough as hell. I like it. So you guys can choose something else if you like. I don't care. If you want a full tower case, if you want something more extreme, by all means. But for 129 bucks, that's exactly what we're going to go for. For the power supply, you always want to get something that's high quality. So we're going to go for a Seasonic 1000 watt Platinum, uh, 80 plus Platinum. Now, Seasonic makes just the best stuff. They've got really good boards inside there, uh, high quality Japanese capacitors, just really high quality components. That's very important. And we don't want nasty power going to these components. So we're definitely going to go with the Seasonic. For the optical drive, I'm just going to grab some slop. Just grabbed like a light on for 20 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever, 15.99. And there's one other thing we need to buy. Uh, remember all those uh, Kingston HyperX 3Ks? Well, we need something to, to deal with that. We can't really use the uh, motherboard itself because RAID 0 with this motherboard, it's just not going to work. You need a separate card to do that. So we're going to get the LSI 9207-8i. Uh, now, this is a PCI Express 
a 3.0 card. So it's going to give you a lot of bandwidth. It's the cheapest SAS card that I could find that really does a good job. I mean, there's some more expensive ones, of course, but we're trying to keep this under 3000 And for $300, uh, you're going to get a lot of speed out of this one, mostly thanks to the PCI Express 3.0. And, um, yeah, it, it's the only thing that I could find at that price range that is going to be able to keep up with all five of the Kingston HyperX 3Ks. So there you have it, an epic editing rig for under 3 k uh, Again, if you wanted to go crazy, you could get one of the Xeons, uh, and you can also upgrade a graphics card. And you can even get more hard drives if you wanted, larger hard drives, you guys can go as crazy as you want, but um, I mean, really, that's that's all you really need to to get a really nice editing machine, very stable, and you can play games on that too, because I think all of us here do edit and play games on the side, so kind of mixed all that in. High quality, high quality components, folks. If you guys have any questions, send me an email. We're gonna be trying to build this thing as soon as Max gets here. See if we can rustle up all these parts. I'll go round them up. Rustle up? What am I from Texas? 